Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Mech Engineer for our fifth episode, if I'm not mistaken. My goodness, we have been playing this for longer than I expected, considering we started out as a First Taste miniseries, and the longer we go, the less First Taste or miniseries seems to apply to this series. But, as, uh, as you seem to have enjoyed what you saw and have wanted to see more, here we are. Thank you so much for massaging those lovely buttons and helping to feed St. Algorithmus. Now, as for the uh, campaign so far, well, in the last episode, we actually fielded some of our under uh, understrength lances for the first time. We did a mission where we had just three people, or so did two missions uh, in one day. Now, if we can, I'd like to continue that. But first things first, let's not get ahead of ourselves, shall we? Let's go through the checklist as usual. So, checking out the calendar, we have received some new specialists today. Actually, let's go ahead and check what specialists we got. We got 40 engineers, or oh, that will have been partially from completing the cannon there, and 54 science team. That's actually very, very nice indeed, and we can probably set up some research at the end of this turn. Uh, as for the rest of the calendar, sorry about that, uh, tomorrow we're going to get our motors and our new reactor. We're also going to finish the Munalon research, which is going to give us our first energy weapon. I'm very excited for that one. On Thursday following that, we'll get some components and a fourth motor, and then on Friday we'll also get some components and the the big thing that I'm looking forward to we will get a new mech and the ability to build more of him, the plate. I'm very excited about that one. But next up on our list of things to do is to upgrade the city. Now, looking at our stats, we have got 100% food supply, 100% energy. Very, very happy with this. Our overall efficiency of the city has gone up to 67%. Now, this is applied to every other system. So getting this up more and more uh, is going to be a very big part of uh, of getting this the uh, declining uh, structural stability of the city under control. Now, looking at this, although food supply is only at 18%, it is it completely satisfying our needs right now. So life systems would normally be the next thing, but we're actually quite close to completely satisfying consumer goods. And I, I believe that for every uh, for every area that you've completely satisfied the demand, that has a much bigger impact on your overall efficiency and on the accumulating city damage. So let's have a look at what we can do, perhaps, to sort out sit, uh, consumer goods. Are there any things in particular? Let's have a look. I can see a couple of items around the ring. Uh, let's have a gander. Any of these particularly important? Additional universal factory. That would give us 1% on a couple of things. Residential manufacturing district. Uh, again, a couple of things. We can definitely upgrade that one straight away. I think there's one down here as well. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything particularly important going on there. Uh, it doesn't look like anything that gives us any sort of uh, specialist uh, result, uh, any kind of uh, additional uh, effect, such as the, the mech hanger here. Uh, I believe there was one up here. Uh, maybe there was, and let's have a... Oh, I was a little bit off there. Raw material factory. That one would greatly improve our food supply. Hmm. I'm kind of tempted for that because although we have just reached 100%, I'd kind of like to future-proof it, and the more uh, more people that we get out of the hospitals, the, the more we're going to be putting strain on our life support systems and our food supply in general, but we can't easily upgrade this one. Let's have a look at the fire department down here. Fire brigades are on duty here, contain separate water tanks. Uh, this one would improve wounded humans and life support. Oh, actually, that's uh, that's quite nice. Okay, I think we're going to go for this one then. It's fairly modest cost, nothing that's going to break the bank there. Sure, we'll pop that one in there and then immediately start upgrading the raw materials factory. Uh, uh, yeah, raw material factory up above, and that'll give us a good bunch of food as well. It doesn't really look like the, the, any of the consumer goods upgrades were much... We're like big bang for buck. They all seem to be like 1%. So maybe maybe that's just going to be something we have to work on over time. But okay, time for us to decide on our mission. Now, as I've been mentioning, I would like very much to get over here if we can. And uh, it looks like we can at least make a path there. How about here? We can do that as well. Okay, so we could go for a water mission here if we wanted to. What about the other ones? Um... 
That isn't so bad with the temperature and the fact that we'd be dealing with uh, with uh, rather handsy aliens. Not super keen on that. What about over here? We've got a cave, just Operarius, though. And again, I, uh, oh, I'm not sure I'd want to tangle with anything that could entangle us underwater as well. That seems like a recipe for disaster. But this cave... Now, if we have a look at the resources, we could get some decent uh, Bjorn over here, some decent Bjorn down here. Uh, I mean, there is good metalite over there, but I'd have to tangle with uh, aliens that could just gobble down our mechs, which is not something I'm super excited to try and uh, deal with. Certainly not yet, anyway. Or alternatively, we could just take on a cave and have a whomping great return. How many Brucus are we? We're looking at four Brucus here, but we would have to be navigating a cave again. Not the nicest places to have to get through, but it is definitely something that we could look at. The, the, this is ultimately a resource management game as well as a mech commanding game. So keeping uh, an eye on our material wealth is a big part of our kind of uh, our strategy for the long term. I think this might be where we go, but if we do that, then we're not going to be bringing Shellcracker. And if I can't field... Hmm, we might just want to field a 5 mech lance, a, a reinforced lance for this one, instead of trying to field two underpowered lances. That might not be the worst thing to do. Alright, well, I've got a, got a bit of a plan, but now, the part that I think a lot of people have been waiting for... Rejigging the shepherd with the second cannon. However, I've got a little bit of news for that. Oh, actually, before we go any further, yes, at long last, I painted the marshmallow. Uh, I I even put a little bit of extra embellishment on the marshmallow. Look, so many people at this point have suggested that marshmallow should. Why haven't we painted the marshmallow white? Well, here we go. Uh, I'm thinking that I kind of like this uh, red stripe with white outline as kind of like just a general theme that'll uh, follow across all of our mechs. I know red and white is kind of blood and bandages, uh, but nevertheless, uh, this is not a medic uh, medic mech, as evidenced by the uh, the kind of the roasted uh, or toasted marshmallow uh, uh, paint job on the end of the guns. I mean, look, we're, we're firing a flame weapon. It's called the marshmallow. I had to. I hope you can forgive me. Uh, ooh, did no, I didn't, did I? Oh, thank goodness. For a second there, I, th I thought I was sure I fixed that in the last episode. Did I go through an entire episode without fixing that? Uh, wouldn't be entirely outside the uh, realms of possibility with me, but I would have been especially sad if that had been the case. Okay, well, Marshmallow, there we go. We've uh, shown you off a little bit. Now, as for the Shepherd... We have the carrying capacity, and in fact, we have significant carrying capacity thanks to these electric motors there. Uh, but we have the carrying capacity to bring a second cannon. But it has been noted that uh, the disparity between the two underpowered lances that we fielded last turn may have been that the the one with the shepherd and the shellcracker they were more focused on point damage across long range it didn't really have anti swarm capabilities not like the the other lance with the dig rig that one seemed to just do an amazing job now some of that was down to the terrain but i think you're probably onto something with pointing out that there was a a big difference between the long range and the close range capabilities now with that coupled with a couple of the other comments that we got, one in particular from Talon1124, who suggested trying out the slow mod on some weapons, as they feel that it would help delay the Brucus's ability to flee, and if nothing else, would allow us to basically stun lock the Columbra and prevent its rotation. So if we can just get behind it, start hitting with slow ammunition, then it would never rotate all the way around and laser us. And that, that does seem like a very, very good suggestion. But Mr. Calzo warned that slow effects on a 20 millimeter rotary cannon will reduce the penetration so much that it will struggle to do any damage and while that is in and of itself a bad thing they did make the note that it will still impart the slow effect even if it can't penetrate armor even if it's not really doing damage it'll still slow things down so with that in mind I am actually tempted to set up a 20 millimeter rotary cannon with the slow effect. Uh, I don't think a another big cannon like this, because they fire so infrequently, I don't think they would be a great swarm weapon. 
so, that being said, yeah, I guess you could have it with the multi-shots, make it a bit like a tank gun shotgun, but that's an awful lot of weight for what is effectively a secondary weapon at that point. But let's go ahead and uh, set this out. We'll just uh, leave that there. Uh, let's go ahead and add in the slow mod. Now, we're not very accurate at all, but I am hopeful that this will, in fact, be able to slow it down. And it is. We're, we're noticing it very, very uh, gradually coming to a stop. All right. Well, uh, with only four armor penetration, it would be able to take on a brook as a close range, but not much more than that. Let's see how far we can push this. Let's put that all the way up and see what we've got. Okay, armor penetration of six. And it gets a reasonable distance back there. Uh, how much would we want to say? If that's 600 at the very maximum range, then that is about 600. I guess that little half pip there is about 600 or somewhere between these two. Uh, might even be this part here is about the 600 mark. I really wish it was possible to be a little bit more accurate with that. But let's say that out to 600 is the maximum uh, maximum range that we're going to engage with this weapon. Right now, it's not doing a very good job. I can choose to invest in accuracy, make sure that the dispersion of the uh, the munitions isn't quite as aggressive, and we would have a much better chance of actually hitting the thing we're aiming at, or at the very least, the things directly around it. Because if it spreads too much, the 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 swarm might be just coming around a little a little uh, corner on some sort of cliff or something. And if the spread is all over the place, sure, if the swarm was omnipresent and just f flooding towards you, it doesn't really matter where you're aiming. But when they're just kind of n funneling through a narrow line, if your bullets are going too wild, then it's not really going to have any impact, no matter how many bullets you're putting downfield. I am in favour of going with uh, with more accuracy rather than more bullets more bullets will you know uh put uh, it will will allow you to to gain more hits but you're just just increasing the amount of bullets you're throwing away and on a weapon that is uh, already drinking our ammo supply as aggressively as this cannon does i think i would prefer to be more accurate rather than just spray and pray Especially because one of the, the things I'm most happy about with the Shepherd is how ammo efficient it is. But that being said, maybe we could afford to pull down the penetration or at least the damage a little bit. We haven't dropped the penetration and that has dramatically increased the uh, or rather decrease the dispersion of the of the uh, bullets i think this is a this is a reasonable setup here okay let's go ahead and get that into the shepherd and then we will set everything else up around it there we go ah okay so energy is a little bit high however we will be able to get this. Now, I can see this at, at a glance because we're only four points out and I've got two weapons where I can gain two energy. As I've mentioned previously, you can both over, uh, over vault or under vault a, uh, a weapon system. Or, well, any system really that draws energy. Now, when you over vault, the system will draw five more energy, but your reactor will gain... Uh, a little bit of extra headroom. It'll gain three max energy. So in effect, you're using up two extra energy to overvolt because the difference between drawing five more but having three more to offer, you, you are losing two. The exact same is true of undervolting. If you undervolt something, it will draw five less, but your reactor will lose three of its max capacity. But that ends up as a net benefit of two. So since we can undervolt both of these, as they are ballistic weapons, they don't need energy. Let's just do that. And it brings us down to 32. Exactly. That is perfect. All right. So that's all taken care of. And that gives us quite a lot of weights to play around with in terms of armor. And I would very much like to do that. So... For our bulk armor, let's have a look at the uh, the advanced armors we've got. We've got the very <laughs> it's one to one uh, weight versus armor there. Uh, a little bit better, three to five here, or actually a lot better, and three to four. Now, if weight were a big concern, I would say we probably would want to go for this and then bulk it up with uh, this one. But I think we'll probably be able to fit this in. And just because I think uh, we're going to be able to use two of the uh, basic 
plated on. Yeah, I like that pattern a lot more than having a bulk. That being said, maybe we could do something like this. And no, you don't have to be this finicky at all. I am just because I'm... There we go. That, that is also a pleasing pattern. Now, uh, we've actually got enough weight to accommodate the highest tier strike face as well. So that's going to give us an extra 8 down. Wow, we're almost at 30 passive armor. That is bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. And we're still under weight, which means we can probably pop quite a few uh, layers of ablative armor coating on there as well. That is wonderful. We, we would be able to eat 16 missile hits without it starting to scratch at our... Uh, starting to tick away at uh, our armor and do damage to the systems beneath because uh, explosive weapons tend to be a little bit more penetrative. But that seems wonderful to me. Mind you, it's going to take us 56 engineers, which is quite a lot, but still, I think this is about as good as we're going to get the Shepherd for now. So, okay, let's uh, go ahead and deploy the Shepherd. We have a mission in mind, so now we need to go across to our pilot and pull them off and find out who we're going to be taking out. Right, now then, uh, in the last uh, mission, we actually sent both of our squad leaders out, uh, but Mini Murgle is actually getting quite close to level 6 now, so I think we're going to take out Mini Murgle for this one. Uh, if we can get you up to 6, then it means we can take on a second commander perk, which would be very, very nice indeed. Shellcracker, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait a little while longer. Now, who have we got down here? Ravian, let's get you out. Uh, do you want to go in the Marshmallow? Actually, who's what kind of stats have you got? Reaction isn't great. CBS isn't great. No. Isham, you're going to grab the Marshmallow. Uh, Ravian, you're going to get Mr. Pink. We are going to put Encrypt in the Dig Rig, of course. And finally, uh, let's see. Someone with a really good relationship with Mini Murgle, I think. Let's have a look at who we've got. Ah, wow, okay. Synthetic Samurai. My lord, you're on good terms with them. Let's have a look at you. Synthetic Sa uh, Sorry, uh, Synthetic Samurai. I do apologize. That's Sound Sphere. Uh, Sound Sphere, age 28, uh, Stasis 1. Experiences manual control of the station's defensive systems, laying out the optimal route for transporting minerals and control of defense drones. Ooh, maybe uh, in the future we are going to want to train you up for use with the dig rig or whatever specific tanky mech we have at the time. Best relationship, unsurprisingly, Mini Murgle. Worst relationship, Zed. Well, that's okay. Let's get you into Mini Mr. Brown there, I think that is going to be... Actually, you know what? I'm going to switch you and Isham around. Let's have Isham in Mr. Brown, and the sound sphere can get, be in Marshmallow. All right, I think this is about everything we're going to need. Now, there are five nests, four Brucus. There's a good chance of us getting some decent rewards for this one. Let's set up the, uh, the primary attacks. We are going to want... Yeah, Mini Murgle, I still want you to go for the Ovums as a priority. Uh, we will set up the Brucus to be targeted by Marshmallow next. You can get the, the flames on the Brucus. I would like another Brucus target, and we will go with... Uh, let's go with Ishim for that one. And finally, Ravian can target the Columbra, and Encrypt in the Dig Rig can... Uh, sorry, not Calumbra, sorry, the uh, Operarius, and uh, Encrypt can target the same one. Now, I like having Encrypt on the second dial, because I, can, I, I just find it a little bit easier to find them. If, if they're buried, well, whatever is the last one, if they're buried in amongst, I'll sometimes uh, fat finger the keys while trying to select them, but this way, I'll always know it's the, it's the last key on the, on the hot keys to select them. All right, let's get out there and get into a fight. <laughs> Okay then, let's uh, go through the usual. First tab to turn on Wasset camera, then T to bring up full screen, and because we're in a cave, we need to cycle to my preferred cave exploration camera mode. Right, let's find the uh, Brucus first. One, two, three, and indeed four. They are actually our primary targets. Uh, obviously, taking out the nests is uh, important, but we can do that little by little. Uh, though, have we got... Oh, there are meant to be five. One, two, three, four. Hmm, where's the... Oh, what? No, I don't see the fifth. Uh, I'm sure they were meant to be. Maybe there are there are two red dots there. That actually might be a uh, a nest right 
next to the Columbra. That wouldn't surprise me too much. All right, then. Let's get to work, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to start controlling people very specifically. I am going to want uh, Dig Rig to start... Oh, as soon as we have the uh, opportunity for it. There we go. Uh, I would like you to go for a route. Uh, have I not got you selected? There we go. I didn't have you selected. My bad. Uh, I would like you to go th for, through a route, just clearing out the rocks down here. And then just maybe cleave off that little bit there, coming back. Now, everyone else is going to follow along as you make progress. As you clear the path, they will follow. In fact, we can probably advance and start taking out the uh, the enemies just ahead of you without too much trouble. There we go. Let's just keep you safe the whole time. Keep Digrig safe. That is the order of business right here. Digrig will uh, clear the path so that we can engage that nest. Already gone. Fantastic work there, Digrig. All right. Now we've got a load of the Brookers together. I don't really want to get too close to them, lest I trigger them. Uh, all right. Well, let's uh, actually have Digrig just carve a path through here, down, and then back up, as that will probably give us sight on the advancing Brucus, I should imagine. Someone is already trying to get through there. Ah, there's a bunch of Operaras that got uh, got uh, deposited down here. Are we going to be able to take that out before... Ooh, that was close. It almost got away from us. I wonder if Digrig would be able to chase them down, though. Now, that is definitely an interesting idea. I'm also very, very tempted to just burrow straight through and try and take out the Columbra, and then we can take everything else out at our leisure. Because going around here under constant attack, not exactly a super high priority for me, I'm not going to lie. Right, uh, sure, okay. Try straight down and then straight back up if you can. If I need to, I will pull you out. But let's see what you can do before that uh, rotation is back coming through your way. Uh, it's getting a little bit too close, I think. Uh, okay, let's bring Digrig back up, please. Dig Digrig, can you move? Oh, Digrig's stability tanked pretty hard there. Uh, that being said, I think I could allow this to shoot through if we really wanted to. Uh, that actually might not be a bad way of doing it. But, Digrig, you can finish off this now and then come straight back up if you could. Stability is going to tank really aggressively. And that will slow Digrig down enormously. Okay, that's enough there. Let's uh, get Digrig back up here, please. Stability has to recover. So we can only do this every now and then, because uh, actually drilling tanks stability. Uh, that was actually a question that, that was asked, if there's any reason why I gave someone high CBS to control the Digrig rather than high reaction speeds. Uh, and it is literally due to stability. Uh, if you could just drill through here. The, the main problem is that we're going straight through a wall and every tile is an awful lot of drilling that the dig rig is having to do. And so that causes stability to drain very, very quickly. Uh, okay, time for you to retreat if you could, please. There we go. Let's get through here. In fact, we could possibly even allow you to finish... To Ooh, that you took some damage there. I didn't like... Uh, I thought you had pulled far enough back. Let's just have a quick look. Did you take... Oh, yeah, you did. That uh, laser beam is a menace, I say. A menace. Uh, let's just try and clear this up. And the whole group is going to follow you in there this time. Uh, you go ahead. Let's get everyone down there. There is a viable path. And as they, they approach here, Digrig may get into a bit of trouble here. I think we should be okay. And we'll probably be able to deal with this yet. There we go. It has actually stalled its movements completely. Oh, God. It's just deployed a, uh, a turret. Not a great fan. Not going to lie about that one. Uh, Digrig, are you okay? Uh, it is down. Is everything there dead? I can't quite tell. Can't quite tell. Not a great fan of this scenario. Feels like things are going a little bit awry. Uh, let me make sure I've got everyone selected. Uh, Dig Rig, how are you doing down there? Still four pips of damage. Uh, okay, that's, uh, it's not the greatest scenario. 
But it's a salvageable one, I think. Dick Rig needs to continue moving. We've got turrets in here that I very much want you guys to eliminate. Can you not destroy them in close quarters? Um, can you get down here and target this? Uh, we might not be able to. It might not be something that we can easily engage. Uh, they are spreading out. They, I think they might be stressed. Well, this has gone a little bit awry. Okay, let's uh, withdraw the entire group back for now. Just try and get back if you're, if you're able. Come on, you can move. You can move. You can absolutely do, absolutely do it that way. Come on. Out you come. They are, they are being punished by this turret. Oh my lord. How much damage have you taken? Everyone's taken some decent armor damage, but it's not, it's not awful, but, uh, are they, are they, the turrets really the only things left? That Brucus I would like to try and take out, but these turrets are just absolutely wild. Uh, can we not get you out of there? I might not be able to do it. Let's, uh, take just Dig Rig. Dig Rig, can you quickly just remove the rocks there? So that we can get them out. Okay, never mind. They're free. You can w withdraw as well. Keep falling back. Fall back. There you go. Those turrets, though. How much damage do they take? That's kind of scary, if I'm perfectly honest. That was an awful lot of damage. Right, draw back completely. I need to check on a couple of things. Let's have a look at how people are doing. Are they stressed? It doesn't look like they are. But Isham really wasn't doing so well. It could just be that Isham was disobeying orders, though. Uh, therein is the problem, but look at the resources we've already collected, and we've still got one more Brucus to go through. Right. I want to make sure that uh, Dig Greek can clear this out for us, so get onto that right away. Reveal the Brucus so that we can engage. There we go, that is perfect. All the firepower, all the time, and we've got them, got them down perfect. Now, how on earth do we get through here, though, is the question. Uh, can you advance? It looks like we are actually pushing them back, it's just we're not killing them. How much damage can these things take? I mean, ultimately, I only need to push them far enough back that I can... Oh, is one gone? One is gone. Okay, so they aren't completely impervious to damage, but uh, if they share the qualities of the Brucus, it could simply be that they are extremely damage resistant against projectiles, against kinetic uh, projectiles. Unfortunate, but there we are. I can't easily take this point unless I get in there. I don't want to send Digrig in in order to uh, get up close and personal. I suppose... Is it gone? It might be gone. I think they have cleared it. Wow, that took so much concentrated firepower. All right, a bit of a messy engagement, that one. I'm not uh, not super proud of it, but oh uh, well. Uh, let's see, we've got 775 Metalite, 620 Bjorn, 310 Munalon, and 465 uh, Skalagnit. I will continue to mispronounce that. Uh, let's have a look at you. Time for disobeying orders, 15.73. Average reactor temperature was fine. Ammo uh, Amount of ammo spent by kinetic weapons, yep, 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 yep. Precision... Average distance to enemy, you were quite close, I feel. Connected type weapon efficiency, 0.03%. Yikes, okay. Uh, number of times damage registrations. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Okay, well, let's have a look at the others. I want to get some uh, further stats for this engagement. Uh, total time reloading for kinetic weapons, 7.48. Considering how long we were in this, Mini Murgle... Didn't spend a lot of time reloading, and I'm actually okay with that. I'm, I'm very okay with that, in fact. That, that was pretty good. Uh, you had a lot more time, but of course, that makes sense. 20 millimeter autogun, though, uh, Isham, almost no time spent reloading. That's really impressive, actually. Very, very impressive. Okay, well, uh, not, not a bad engagement, all things said and done, but... A little bit rough. Uh, could have been better. 815 repair costs there. I don't think we're going to be accepting that. I'm just going to put that one out there right now. Uh, okay, well, we've cleared all this area. We, we now have significantly uh, more... Uh, information about uh, about the the uh, areas around here, uh, but let's go ahead. Let's throw all of these first and foremost. Put the pilots back in here. Let's get do the debrief. Do the uh, quick 
hospital and training setup. May need to check out Vitality. Did anyone's Vitality really lose? No. No, it didn't. Okay. So, uh, we're going to be looking for stress resistance next. And we're actually getting better. Ishim, you definitely need some work there. Uh, Zed is the next person who needs some work. Uh, but since we haven't named you yet, I'm going to pop in Winterblade instead. Uh, next up, uh, I think it's reactions that we're looking for. And encrypt with the 35 reactions. Yeah, let's get that. Uh, let's get a little bit of an improvement going on there, shall we? I think that would be uh, quite, quite wise. But as for Ravian, you're not doing too badly there. You've got quite a lot of experience. And Isham is very close to getting their next tier of experience. So really happy with that. And how is Mini Murgle? Mini Murgle's next deployment may get them level 6 or it might just be shy. Knowing my luck, it'll just be shy. Nevertheless, let's throw all of our mechs into uh, engineering. I want to properly check the damage that they sustained in that. So, first up, Digrig. The one that I think is going to be responsible for the lion's share of the repair costs. Actually, not as much as I was expecting. Uh, Alright, well, we're going to cleave this off. There we go. Not too bad. I will then invest... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead. I could continue pulling this down, but I don't think that's wise. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Uh, let's look at the... Well, oh, actually, we can redeploy you immediately. Let's have a look at the Shepherd. Probably just tiny amount. 121, I say. Oof, that is not a tiny amount. Okay, so uh, that was a lot more of a messy engagement than I first realized. Only 44 there. We'll just pay, pay for that. Marshmallow didn't take much damage at all, Mr. Pink. Let's have a gander at you. Oop, wrong thing. Uh, one, yeah, 154. Wow, okay. We're going to burn through quite a lot of our engineers here. Uh, but we are pulling down those costs a fair bit. So um, I'm okay with that for now. Wow. It was Mr. Brown all along. Okay, well, uh, we're going to do this twice. Maybe even thrice. Okay, there we go. That was a big saving for us. But that pretty much used up all of our engineers. There's not going to be any production this cycle, sadly. But, oh, well, that's, that's the way it is. Right, we've got research that we can do. We have uh, completed the thin armor plates, highly pressed layered military armor. We've now got access to the uh, anti-missile system. Small caliber turret for destroying enemy missiles, formerly used to protect the station from asteroids. We'll take 50 staff and six days to do this, but might be worth it. Uh, rocket launch, get a better missile system. We could get go for the railgun system there. Uh, we have got, uh, thanks to the armor plate down here, we've now got underwater battle. Adapting the hull to move underwater will reduce the slowdown by 25%. Also, underwater turbines will speed up the mech and add more oxygen. Add more oxygen. Hmm, okay. Uh, we've also got heat drain. Large installation to remove reactor heat to the out. This is by far and away the most important. I was about to say this is going to instantly win, but A, we couldn't afford it, but I hadn't noticed that part. I was about to say, well, we're about to go into underwater. This one makes the most sense, but no, this one, this one trumps that instantly. It's not even a contest. I don't need to look at anything else, uh, but that one is what we're going to grab next. Okay, so getting heat sinks. Maybe we don't head for the Americas just yet. If we can get, if two days is all we need, maybe instead we head down into Africa. There are three pings down here. Three special sites. And I have been advised in the comments that uh, I want to try and get these as early as I can because they are going to dramatically uh, improve our time in mid-game. That still, that said, there is a lot. Going through the equator is going to be a rough ask. Uh, even this swamp, I'm not actually sure what the temperatures are going to be down there, but uh, I wouldn't be too too surprised if we're looking at 100 plus temperatures. We'll have to see. Right, uh, next up is moving the city and strategic decisions. Well, at this point, we're not going in that direction just yet, so I think we're just going to move down. We'll keep our options open. We can still make our way out there, because it's going to be quite a few days before we get the plates, but still... 
Uh, this, uh, it's only going to be two days until we have heat sinks, and that is going to dramatically increase our potential for going down here and maybe uh, checking these out. We'll have to see. Right, time for us to march the day forward. I think we've done everything. I'll double check. I'll lose no time by double checking. Uh, well, I mean, I lose a few seconds, but it's fine. Right, there we go. Bunch of new motors. We've got uh, a new reactor as well, and we have finished research into uh, Munalon. That is a huge one for us. Right, that was a massive gain on uh, just general resources. Uh, a little bit of city damage. Components went down a little bit. Uh, consumer goods going up. We're well, actually, yeah, we hit 100% just happened to but food supply we didn't hmm, that's a bit of a rough one uh we got a lot of humans out of the hospital that turn okay fair enough uh, overall efficiency hasn't really really shifted around there but uh, still that was that was not bad at all and tomorrow we're going to have heat sinks available to us that, that has changed things quite quite significantly uh, but as per our original plan, we're just immediately going to go for the raw material factory, get that uh, food supply, especially considering that went back down. There we go. We've now got everything up in the 20s. That is a very, very nice place to be and still doing okay for city energy. The fact that we had 100% consumer goods, I'm a little bit surprised by. But uh, I certainly, certainly do like it. Okay, let's have a look at our missions then. What are our options? Uh, we know there's nothing down there. It's 53 degrees, though, but uh, might be okay. We've got a little bit of water there that I'm not interested in playing with. We've got a... Uh, oh, wow. We've got a cave down there. But again, we would be dealing with a couple of nasty enemies that I'm, I'm okay with not having to deal with, frankly. Uh, it looks like the oceans are a little bit uh, aggressive right now, so maybe avoiding that for the time being is a wise move. All right, well, we can definitely hit this one and maybe even this one as well. We could possibly uh, field two underpowered lances and just see what, uh, what we can do with that. I wouldn't be uh, adverse to that as an option. Uh, let's have a look at our pilots right now. Let's pull everyone out of training, see how we can get them all set up. I think, oh, I'm really tempted to, well, if we're sending out two lances, then yeah, we could send out both Minimurgle and Phoenix to Leah uh, today. Okay, well, Phoenix, last time you didn't get to uh, roll with the Shepherd, so I think today you're going to. We'll pop you in there. Uh, who are we going to send with you for this one? Let's have a look. No one likes you as much as Soundsphere likes Mini Merkle. But, uh, you know, Bicklow's on fairly good terms with you. That said, Isham and uh, Ravian might be... Yeah, we should definitely take Isham. I'm going to send out... Uh, let's bring Marshmallow with you. And Ravian can jump into Mr. Pink, I think. Yeah, we'll wait for you to stop resting. Oh, well, we won't actually. We'll wait for you to do whatever you were doing before resting. Right, I think that should be uh, good enough. Let's go ahead and select the mission. Which of the two are we going to go for? I think the one that is a little bit less hot would be the wise move here. That being said, is there any particular reason to think that the... Uh, the mechs are going to be able to handle a 53. Uh, do I have other, other options in case I don't want to expose them to that kind of temperature? Um, any, yes, I do, actually. I've got one other option. So this should be fine. We know that they should be able to handle 32. At least they can handle 29. So I think this one will be okay. And if not, well, uh, I'm going to feel very, very bad. Uh, but carry on. Five nests, two brucus. This shouldn't be too much of a challenge for you. Uh, Nest, I obviously, we're not going to be uh, prioritizing our targets quite like that. But Shepard for the Nest, uh, Marshmallow for the Brucus, and then finally, Mr. Pink can take on the uh, Operarius. All right, let's get the mechs out there and hopefully have a bit of an easier time of it. We don't have the dig rig with us right now, so uh, no, no digging our way to the Columbra. 
Uh, that's a fairly open map, though. We're not going to need it anyway. All right, so let's plan our route of attack. We've got three nests down there. We've got uh, two Brucus down there as well. We've got two nests over here. This shouldn't be too much of a, uh, of a struggle, but let's try and focus on the nests primarily. Ah, damn it. I should have done this a little bit different. Really? Do you need to wander around like that all over the place? Right, there we go. Let's uh, just draw a path like this. Make sure that you're hitting both of these as you go. We're getting more and more artillery strikes from the aliens on the way, which is not amazing for us, I must confess. Right, let's make sure that we take this nest out nice and fast. We're also removing ourselves as far away from the other nest as we possibly can, so we shouldn't have to worry about too much about their approach. Uh, at this point, I would like you to move over here. This will give the Brucus the most shelter from our weapons while we clear up the uh, the uh, wandering Operarius, and now we can scooch down and just completely unload on them. This shouldn't take us too much effort. Thank you. Right, let's make our way down here and set uh, get rid of the other one. Uh, I'm thinking that the uh, the shots from the slow they're not really affecting the Brucus that much. I wonder if they're resistant to the attack type. Uh, can we scooch down here away from those potential turrets? Because there's a lot less firepower here this time. And they were already a problem for me last time. So let's try and stay out of their way if we can. Let's uh, scooch down here if we're able to. Don't let it get away, please and thank you. That is now actually the priority. You should be able to handle all of the operaries around here. So just scooch up there if, you're, if you could, please. Take care of the Operaris where you need to. Marshmallow should be able to prioritize the Brucus. We'll just chase it around until it eventually gives in. There we go. Just need a little bit more firepower. There we are. Okay, now we don't need to deal with these at all. We can see the maximum range of the cannon, I would say. And then we've got maybe the slow and then finally the marshmallow. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell, honestly, but uh, I, I suppose I can just select them individually. Uh, so, uh, if I just pause that there. No. Interesting. It's telling me the, the different engagement ranges of all of them. That's a, that's a bit of a shame. It would have been nicer if I could individually select the mechs and see their individual engagement ranges. Although I wonder... Let me see. Can I hover over them and see that? No, I can't. Oh well. That would have been useful. Uh, it would have been a, a nice way to uh, isolate that information. Uh, being able to control how much information you get in a game that's this information dense is pretty pretty uh, useful, I feel. Right, let's clear this up. This has been a rather uneventful engagement. I'm going to let that move past first, and then we're just going to stride straight through and engage. There we go. I think we're probably able to start moving now. There we are. We should be through this. We're attacking with uh, only with uh, kinetic weapons, so... Uh, we would be able to attack through the energy shield regardless, but we may as well just pause its ability to defend itself. I see no reason to make this harder for ourselves. And there we go. We can just finish that up. And that was about as clean of an engagement as it could have been. Oh, really, caves are such a pain. <laughs> this They make for such messy engagements. We didn't even take any armor damage. Once again, Phoenix led a, a pretty much a perfect, flawless mission. Uh, we, we even um, set it up a little bit differently this time. Uh, okay, well, let's have a look at Phoenix. Only 3.43 seconds spent uh, disobeying, and only 3.74 seconds spent reloading. Nine seconds disobeying Phoenix, and 7.4 seconds spent reloading the Marshmallow. And Mr. Pink, a whopping 15 seconds spent disobeying, but only 3.74 seconds spent reloading, so not too bad there. But Ravian is almost ready to level up, and Isham has, which is very, very nice to see indeed. Okay, well, let's uh, get all of you across, and let's actually find out how we're going to level you up, Isham. Uh, we are still some ways away from being at a point where I think we can think of drones. So, it is either train someone else up to be able to pilot the uh, dig rig and then maybe aim to get a second uh, mech that can fill the dig rig's role, a, a more uh, melee-focused uh, defensive role. 
or we go for just increased accuracy. I think a second offensive person. Sure, Isham, we're going to get you uh, get you trained up as a dig rig pilot or equivalent mech. I think that would uh, that would work out quite well for us. All right. So next mission of the day, uh, we've cleared that out. That's uh, nice and uh, nice and easy for us. That's uh, opened things up a little bit. But I think we're going to clear out this island as well. This one should be, well, it's a little bit messy, but should be, on the whole, a fairly uh, fairly simple affair for us. Now, Mini Mughal, you're not going to have the uh, the Shepherd to play with today, so uh, I don't know how you're going to feel about that. But you, you know what? You're, you can have Shellcracker, the, the long-range mech there. And who are we going to take out with you? Let's have a quick gander. Uh, we will have Encrypt in the dig rig. And finally, let's see, I think we're going to take out... Actually, everyone's everyone's doing pretty well. I think we'll take out Sounds for you, because you two have got such an amazing relationship. Though your relationship went down. Oh. So, <laughs> I see. You're not, you're not pleased with the, the, the previous ex experience in the caves. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're starting to second guess this commander of yours. Oh, drama. My goodness. Okay, well, uh, let's get out there. We should be able to clean this up. Maybe this will restore Soundsphere's faith in Mini Murgle as Lance Commander. Uh, once again, well, actually, Shellcracker, this time you're going to... Well, we don't really have anything that's particularly effective against the Pruka, so Shellcracker is going to be prioritizing the Ovens. We will have Mr. Brown prioritizing the Brucus, and then finally Dick Rig up prioritizing everything else. Right, let's get out there. Fairly modest cost to deploy. This shouldn't be a problem for us, but those are famous last words, if ever I've heard them. Right, let's uh, get in here and have a look around. This is actually quite uh, quite a nice map, and I'm glad to have brought the dig rig for this one because it's going to be a little bit more of a complicated one to get through. There's the Brucus there. We've got three nests and a Brucus. Where's the other Brucus? I wonder. I think it's right there. Okay, well, uh, this one shouldn't be terribly bad for us to manage. Let's wander up in this direction, prioritize taking out the Brucus before or it can start deploying any uh, any um, uh, turrets or anything like that. Let's uh, make sure that that is not something we need to worry about. Too late, apparently. Uh, we don't get to do that. All right, let's move up there. I need you to then prioritize. You can middle mouse button to force fire. And there we go. That's good enough. Now we absolutely need to not be here because those turrets are about to activate. So if you middle mouse button, you will tell your mechs to focus their fire on specific targets. And we just got out of range, but uh, we did take a little bit of damage there. Only armor damage, so that's okay. But, uh, yeah, we, we definitely need to get a better, uh, a faster way of dealing with the Brucus, I think, because uh, that is that is cause for some concern. The other one has come down to say hello to us as well. We literally walked into that. Well, that was not ideal. I'll draw back a little bit. I should have been a little bit faster at the acting there. That was my, my bad, I feel. Uh, I would like these to be removed, and we'll deal with that Brucus in a little bit. Just head over into the corner. Because then uh, everything will be approaching from more or less a controlled direction, I feel. Uh, we thankfully had a little bit of a break in the activity of the ovens there, so uh, we were able to approach a little bit closer. Try and take that out if you could, please. Uh, let's try and... Are you really not engaging right now? Are you reloading? Yes, you are reloading. Shepard is reloading there. There we go. Let's launch all of those rockets. You are not able to hit a brought out of a bomb right now. Are you? Mini Mughal is... Uh, oh, sorry, not Shepard. Mini Mughal is not great with the Shellcracker, I must confess. Uh, can you just focus on that one? There we go. Perfect. We should be able to pop that before there's really anything happening. You notice the fire right outside this nest as it's hatching, as it's uh, deploying units? They were just dying in the fire. Ah, fire is such an amazing weapon. Uh, right, let's make our way over here. We are going to have to worry about the uh, turrets still, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Now, I would, I would normally say let's just attack the Brucus, but actually I think that might be a bit of a problem. And yeah, we've just removed that turret from existence relatively quickly compared to how much trouble we had when it was only kinetic weapons that we had to play with. I think they inherit the uh, the resistances of the Brucus that spawns them. So uh, 
mostly want to go for those things with fire, with rockets, but just not kinetic. Or maybe energy as well, considering we're about to open that up. That's not actually a bad idea when I think about it. Right, we are going to want to make our way around here, I'm going to say. Let's try and stay clear of the, uh, the walls where we can, so that we don't encourage Mini Murgle to shoot themselves. Because you never know at this point. Right, that Brucus is well out of engagement range, and I'm okay with that. Uh, they dropped in, got shotgunned to death, which is uh, perfect. There we go. We should be able to get rid of that oven without too much more difficulty. That being said, no, you, you should be able to focus it. Just aim for that, please. All shots on the ovum if you would be so kind, including all of the shards, because they are going to take it out. There we go. Right, now that that's clear, let's go back down this way. I kind of like the fact that you can see the uh, the path that the mechs are taking just by their, their steps. I wonder if different types of mechs will have different uh, like uh, footprints. That would actually be kind of cool. Uh, let's take a different route because that Brucus is going this way. And I want to mute it rather than uh, just engage it from this little location here. Oh, it doesn't look like we're going to get much of an option. I think that might deploy its turrets in a moment. No? No? Okay. Uh, I don't think it's very far from it, though. So as we get around here, we're likely going to engage. Yeah, it's the only thing to engage, so we are definitely going to take it on. Now the problem is, it is actually close to the uh, to the edge of the map, so it could escape fairly easily if it wanted to. Thankfully, we've turned it around. Okay, that didn't go as badly as it could have. Now, we do not have the means to uh, get rid of the... Uh, uh, sorry, to pause the rotation of the Columbra here. So I'm going to wait for this to move past, and then we're just going to charge in. We're going to get under the shield so that our rockets will actually start firing again. Because they won't even engage while outside the energy shield, which is a little bit of a potch, but uh, oh well. Right, get inside and just engage. Ev release everything onto him, please. And thank you. Uh, I mean, you are doing the job, but just not very well. Uh, let's get around the other side, if you could. Ouch, I think we just exploded ourselves a little bit there. Let's have a look. Uh, no, we didn't. Okay, never mind. Uh, that wasn't so bad then. Okay, well, let's grab that location. Overall, not a bad engagement. We did take a bit of uh, armor damage again. I, okay, I'm, I start to see why Sansui is maybe losing losing a bit of faith with Mini Murgle. You know, Phoenix can go out and everyone comes back. There isn't even a scratch on the paint on the mechs. Mini Murgle goes out. A simple assignment. Comes back all dinged up. My goodness. Uh, still, Mini Murgle does it. Well, actually, of the two of them, which one? Oh, oh, oh. Mini Murgle follows my orders to the letter and comes back all dinged up. Phoenix Alia sometimes decides my orders aren't good enough to listen to. And some. Oh, that, that makes me feel sad. Uh, oh, well. Uh, we have got. So let's have a look. Uh, time spent reloading? No time. Well, 29 seconds. Oof, that's a long time. Very long time to reload those uh, rocket pods. And Digrig didn't reload once. Interesting. Very interesting. But okay, we made made our money back, ultimately. Uh, and only 70 repair costs, that's fine. Let's get everyone back in here. And finally, let's go through hospital and training. Once again, checking out the vitality. Vitality is fine. Second up then, let's check on stress resistance. Stress resistance is largely okay. Uh, but I think Ravian and uh, Vigiri are going to get some uh, downtime there. You can uh, recover here. Uh, CBS should be okay pretty much for everyone. And reactions are actually starting to get a lot better now. Uh, you know what, Clone Zero, you can get some training. We, we are going to need to name you soon, I feel. All right, as far as production goes, we've got uh, a motor and some more components in one day's time. And then two days on this. Uh, we have got our new weapon. It is available, and uh, maybe I should have already uh, played around with that, but I want to wait for the other uh, motor. So that's going to be a next episode sort of thing, but I will give you a quick glance at it. But uh, we are definitely going to want to add in some more components. Now, the reason why I'm sending this to Hangar B 
is hangar A is about to be completely free. And I need five slots to build a minor mech. And that's what I would like to do. So once that's clear, I'm going to pop them in there. So let's just add in the components down here. I'm going to... Ooh, how many How many people do I need? I need 150. Okay, let's just get a one order of uh, components to hangar B, please. And indeed, thank you. That'll do wonderfully. Uh, 50 engineers to get in six days as well. Oof. Uh, do I want some of these? I probably do, thinking about it. Um, still, that would take me below the required amount. So I'm, I'm not going to do that for now. Uh, a little bit of a shame there, but well. well. Right, we've got uh, 64, uh, 64 uh, scientists that we can deploy. We have unlocked the, uh, the new laser weapon we can unlock lasers quick firing pulsed laser powerful enough to work in the atmosphere reduce damage and water heats up the reactor or the atomic bomb mankind's strongest weapon the depleted immunolon from the city's reactors is used for generating bombs every week research allows you to build rockets to deliver these bombs and launch them through a special menu on the map the rockets reach their target after the movement of the giants and this is going to be our primary way of getting rid of the nests now that is very tempting it only takes 40 staff but it'll lock them up for eight days Whereas we could instead invest 50 staff and in three days to get a quick firing version of our laser. And I think we should because that will be ready before the mech that we, we intend to build will be ready. So uh, let's go ahead and do that and that'll, that'll pop that the uh, prototype into our very, very eager hands, I am sure. But that is going to be it, I think, for this episode, looking at the time. Uh, so the last thing for us to do is to set up strategic movement. Now, how long do we have on the heating tomorrow? And then a day after that, we get the plate and some components and some components tomorrow as well. Yeah, this is actually looking quite nice. This is looking very, very nice. I think we are going to start marching southward. This wasn't my original plan, but, uh, I mean, as long as we can get close enough to the cities to hit them, then that shouldn't be a problem. What What is this there? I know this is a... Uh, that is a... Uh, it looks like a, a plains to me. A wasteland, sorry. That's a desert. Okay, so... That one might be a bit hot for us to travel through. Still, we're going to need to get close enough, and maybe this is where an atomic bomb would be useful. Uh, we're going to need to get close enough to be able to launch a mission into that city. But at that point, we would have enough clues. Odds are the clue, uh, the, the clue is going to send us over here. But uh, you know what? That isn't terrible. It's sending us away from our, our giant enemies over there. So that might well be where we want to go. It is day nine. We've actually done quite well considering what we're currently researching. I'm actually very excited for this. But we're going to start marching the city southward. Now, I did say that we're going to check out the uh, the laser, and it'll be a very short check out of it, because I want to properly consider this uh, in the next episode when we're actually equipping it to a mech. But high-powered impulse laser weapon, damage and firing speed depend on energy consumption. Notice a few things. Let's move this out there. A very short range. We are looking at just over 300 so if we wanted this to actually hit anything we'd probably be about there uh so yeah we're, we're probably about 400 450 maybe at uh, max range that'll have to do uh right next up if we strip all of its points I'm not going to go through all of the mods and the other things that we can consider, but the native weight is is 14. The energy draw is 40. This is very hungry compared to what our current weapons, uh, current reactors produce. It's going to be a rough one. Damage is 60 though, and although it has not got any armor penetration, the beam isn't going to go through. Like it'll never have a, any armor penetration. It can't pass through one enemy and go into another, but. It does significant armor damage. So this is, with rockets, 
the uh, in fact i'd probably say this is better than rockets though uh, i haven't really sat down with the numbers this can strip armor away at ridiculous speeds let's uh, actually set you in a little bit closer look at that this is absolutely wild it's only doing 300 damage but it's doing basically uh we're doing one percent of its damage as as uh, raw damage to to the armor and that's absolutely perfect uh you can do a load of things though one thing you shouldn't do is reduce energy you could pull the energy cost down to zero sure whatever it's only going to do 35 damage now though and it's not going to fire very quickly because that is what the energy uh energy in uh impacts for energy weapons uh, the more power you feed it the faster it fires the more damage it does there is no way of us increasing the energy we put into it though i do believe that you can increase the uh, the overall firing weight now it isn't a perfectly accurate weapon as you can see so you know there's there's some things that we're going to need to tune for it but that's going to be it for for this episode i will will play around with that more in the next now i've set everything up so that we can pass the next turn at the beginning of the next episode because i feel that's going to be a little bit better for us ultimately because it saves me going through the the checklist of what the the new day brought twice once at the end of the episode and once at the beginning of the next one and just keeps the uh, the daily checklist a little bit uh, better organized but that is going to be it from me i really do hope you have enjoyed today's episode and i hope that you're looking forward to tomorrow's as much as i am when we're finally going to start playing with energy weapons proper and maybe even doing so in a hot environment which is the worst possible combination i don't know why we've ended up with this but nevertheless i hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you then but until next time from me and all of our pilots here do take care engineers